Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So today I am going to be doing a video for a viewer I basically asked on my YouTube community page. Um, I'm doing a few videos on the whiteboard. Has anyone got any questions for me? So I forgot the name of the person but I do know it is a regular viewer so I apologise. But we basically asked um, essentially what do you feel about uh, sharing information on YouTube. Do you feel it's a bad thing, a good thing? I know a lot of people have talked about this before, including myself on a number of occasions, but I haven't actually done a video, or at least I don't think I've done a video separate from Thursday Talks from talking about it within the middle of the live stream. Uh, I don't think I've done a separate video on the channel for it. So this is a good place to obviously direct people towards, um, so then I can direct them towards uh, if I get the question. I can simply say, look, there's a video. I did a video on it. So also, we're going to be covering a few different things. In, fa in fact, this was included within the question, uh, talking about sharing bolos, race to the bottom, harming niches, all that sort of stuff. So, glamorizing reselling, being a YouTube reseller. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And many, many people will know that I've gone back and forth on this. And clearly this video is going to be more subjective opinion than anything else. And you can obviously draw your own opinions and conclusions. And you can share those with me in the comment section if you would like. Um, now, I, as I say, I've been back and forth on this topic. First, I thought, no, it doesn't affect the market. Then I thought, yes, it does affect the market. Then I thought, no, and then I thought, yes. And that's come in different stages, really. So, for example, when I first started, board games and children's books and things like that, just this bog standard board games, bog standard children's books did really, really well. You know, or, well, I say really, really well. They, they sold pretty well. That's what I mean. They might not have got like crazy high prices or anything, but the sell through rate was really good on them. And then over the months, they kind of tailed off, tailed off, tailed off. Now, at first, I didn't really think that had anything to do with, um, you know, be, there being YouTube resellers out there. I didn't have, think it had anything to do with uh, YouTube, any, anything like that, really, sharing information, all the rest of it. But then I got thinking, I thought, you know what, I think it, I think it does, because that did go down, and it, you know, it was over a few months or so, but it just so happened to be right when, uh, you know, people were starting to grow in subscribers. I mean, when I first started watching Nick, as I've said, he was on about 3,000 subscribers, and obviously, he's now on, what, 40k or something crazy, but at that point, the board games were still doing okay, and obviously, 3,000 people, he was getting maybe 1,000, 2,000 views a video, and then, obviously, other people in the community, Ben and other people, were starting to slowly come up, but they weren't getting as many views, um, but it wasn't quite then, it was maybe six months, 12 months after I started watching the board game started to really go down. And by that point, a few more people had entered the community. A few more people were obviously becoming resellers from that. Um, and so it, it made me think maybe that was that had, that had was in part some, somewhat to do with it. But then obviously more recently when we had more of an expanse in not only some of the UK resellers, but also uh, over in America as well, we've had big, you know, we've got, multiple channels now over a hundred foot uh, over a hundred thousand subscribers in the reselling world i never thought that would ever happen um i mean i remember when waking profit i think was on maybe 40 or 50k subscribers and even then a hundred thousand seemed like quite a way off um and 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 obviously craigslist hunter and stuff he was probably on about the same about 30 thousand maybe twenty thousand, something like that and it seemed quite, it still seemed quite worth. And they were like the big two. There was no one bigger than that. And then obviously you had Chad and um, Ronnie who were possibly, I don't know, around that 10K, maybe a bit less. And at this time, Nick was po possibly around 7, 8K, something like that, maybe 10K. But it really started to spark off then. And then it had got into that realm for me of, yeah, this possibly does affect things. And I still went back and forth. I was like, ah, maybe not, maybe maybe yes. But yeah, I, I do feel now it does definitely affect thing, things. It does definitely affect the market, especially if you've got someone, one of the big guys. I mean, now we've got um, people even on close to 300,000 subscribers like Steve and Steph or um, I think Rally Roots of A not far off 200,000, or they're getting, they're getting that way, maybe the 130, 140,000, I'm not sure, but it's a, it's a lot, so there's, you know, there are channels out there with a lot of subscribers now, and so 
essentially we could say this relates to the harming niches bit here i definitely do think it does in one regard um especially if you're highlighting individual items so you're saying i'm picking up this top from this brand or whatever and you've got a lot of people watching you yeah but no doubt i mean it's just logical that it's going to affect it in some regard and if you let's say i mean we could even break it down further just give a very general example you've got um something that's getting a hundred sales a month right on complete and sold uh, i don't know it's just some shirt something like that tommy banana or whatever you call it. i'm not a clothing seller so i don't know the names Tommy Bahama, Tommy Banana shirt or whatever. We'll go back to later. A load of the clothing t sellers talk about Tommy Banana or whatever it is. Anyway, so um, you've got that shirt there, right? And it's selling 100 a month, right? And there's maybe, I don't know, 90 sellers. So 90 of these items on from 90 different sellers, right? Each having one quantity. Well, that's fine because you've got... Well, actually, would that even work? Because if you've got 100 sales... Well, yeah, I suppose because some of the sales could have been from ones that have already gone off that had a greater quantity in the past so i suppose it still would work so let's just say for argument's sake if i have got that wrong a hundred and a hundred so there's a hundred quantity on and a hundred have sold in the last month right that's fine you, you're cool you're okay you, you're just about there because you've you've got the right amount of buyers right amount of sellers cool but imagine if someone shows us on a video and they've got hundred thousand subscribers and maybe on that particular video they get thirty thousand views right and maybe out of those thirty thousand views um i don't know <sighs> what i mean this is very um oh what do i call what do you call it this is very just kind of made up figures, but essentially, uh, you know, maybe 500 of those people go out around the thrift stores and charity shops on that day. They might already have been resellers, but we might not have known about that brand. And then suddenly out of those 500, maybe 10% of those actually find one within a couple of weeks after that video, something like that. It's a pretty fair time scale. So you've got like 50 other shirts going on eBay. Well, now you're out of balance, you see, between the number of sales and the number of buyers. Uh, the number of sales and then the number of sellers or the number of buyers and number of sellers so then that's going to affect it logically you know just mathematically you can see there how that would affect it so i do think it does harm niches to some regard um yes i suppose that we could say because of what what i've just highlighted that does lead to a race to the bottom people obviously um you know having to drop prices because the demand, the supply is more than the demand, so therefore you end up, your prices have to come down. So yeah, that could uh, end up with a race to the bottom. And then sharing bolos, that's an interesting one because we have, this is a little bit different actually, because we have with bolos, um, they're a little bit less common. I mean, I hesitate to say where, although some of them will be where, um, but they are definitely less common. So even if there's people sharing them, it might not affect them as much as you think because people have to find them and if they're harder to find, if they're a true bolo that is something quite, you know, fairly hard to find, maybe you only find it once or twice a car boot season or that's kind of like the margin, then you might not be so bad on them. It might not harm them a lot. However, saying that, I have seen a few bolos that um, have gone down in price, most probably from people sharing them and obviously um, more people more people looking out there and therefore uh, a few more of them getting found by resellers opposed to maybe the general public who wouldn't actually put them on eBay. So yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a different one with bolos, a bit of uh, kind of, there's one way to look at it, but there's another way to look at it. It might not harm them as much, but it might do. You, you never know. It really depends on the bolo and it really depends on how rare they are. If they're really, really rare, then there's only a very few number of them out there anyway. So uh, even if there's more people looking for them, that might not mean that more people find them necessarily or might not mean that that many more people find them. So therefore, it's not going to affect the market hugely. But yeah, so glamorizing reselling do youtubers affect reselling uh in terms of the niches in terms of the prices that you can get all the rest of it in short for one answer i would say yes um but if you look into it there's, there's possibly a bit more to it it's not necessarily just down to reseller uh, youtube resellers or anything like that but you know we have to say we have to admit that a fair bit of it could be down to them so that being said what can we take from this, from this video? Um, well, there's really only one thing we can take from this video. Look at my horrible 
uh, writing, except you, you can take you can take away from this video my horrible writing on the on the whiteboard here. But the one thing I really think we should take is uh, this YouTube. Uh, let's say YouTube money. Basically, start a YouTube channel because you'll make a load of money and then it'll outweigh the difference of your lack of sales. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not, I'm really joking. I don't get paid half enough to... Why do I have to do this crap? I don't get paid half enough. Anyway, so... Oh, God, oh that's that. Ah, drop now. It's blooming like things dropping. So, um, yeah, uh, basically, uh, if you're doing YouTube, do it for the fun of it. Um, because, to be honest, we have another... Actually, before we go, I've just thought of another angle to this. Everyone says about YouTube, glamorizing, recycling, glamorizing, recycling YouTube. Everyone, a lot of people are of that opinion, like myself, that it does impact the uh, niches and stuff. But then a lot of people will be quick to say, "Well, why don't the YouTubers stop doing it? You know, why don't you just stop doing it? If you if you know this, why do you, why don't you stop doing it? Because the fact is, right, and I've talked about this before. If I go off YouTube, right? Essentially, someone else is just going to come on and then we're just going to be in the same situation. And if I'm very honest and I'm being very kind of uh, selfish here with my... Uh, very, just kind of projecting my levels of selfishness, I'd rather earn like 60, 70 a quid a month on YouTube rather than someone else. So I'd rather someone else doesn't take my spot and I just have my spot here. So that's, uh, I suppose, one reason why certain people st uh, don't stop. Although... An element of just because I mean 60 70 pound a month for what I do on YouTube, it doesn't warrant the time. So, obviously, an element of just passion and love for YouTube comes into it as well. Um, but yeah, so that's I mean, for me, really, uh, on the question of why I don't stop, uh, where's this gone now? Uh, it's it's a battle, it's a, it's a friction between the money, which isn't even worth the time anyway, and the the love, basically. Uh, well, no, it's not not a battle between the two. It's a, a union of the two that then means that, obviously, that they're the reasons why I do YouTube, the, the love and the money. Um, and that's, they're the reasons why I won't stop doing YouTube, essentially. Um, and I don't know. I suppose that's the reasons why, as I say, a lot of people don't stop doing YouTube. And certainly the bigger YouTubers, because, I mean, those who are on... Uh, certainly those who are on, like, you know, we saw YouTubers who are on over 100,000, 150,000, 200,000. No doubt, so long as they're not using copyrighted music and all the rest of it, they're earning a full-time living from YouTube. You can earn a full-time living from YouTube uh, on, basically, I would say, 200,000 views a month with without, like... Um, Copyright. So if you could monetize 200,000 views a month, that would get you about a grand a month. And yeah, it would be, well, no, actually, you need more than that. Okay, okay, 300,000 views, let's say that, 300,000 views. And if you look on Tube, TubeBuddy Channelytics to, for some of those bigger channels, you know, the guys who've got 150,000 or whatever, they're, they're, they're doing that. They're pretty much doing that. So um, if you can do that, then you can make like a, a fairly full, a fairly decent full-time living. I mean, yeah, it's dependent because it depends on your CPM and your, you know, and all the rest of it. And also the length of your videos, you know, how much watch time you're getting on your videos. So it might be that someone actually has a million views, but they don't make as much as I personally would think because they're not getting as much watch time and stuff like that. Maybe we do like really short videos or maybe they've got, they're getting copy copyright claims for a lot of their videos and stuff um but you know you can make a full-time income so then that's where we get into the debate of uh that people always say and people always go you know say, sort of complain about which is rightly so um but we complain about well they're getting a full-time income from youtube and they're basically just a youtuber and, and they're not really doing we anymore they're like they're only doing it to a very very small extent and and they're basing this channel on something that they supposedly do full time, but actually they're getting paid way more on YouTube and they're spending way more time on YouTube. They're only spending like, 
you know, half a day on reselling in the week and then the rest of it's on YouTube. Now, there's a lot of good channels out there who have got a lot of subs and they still do uh, a lot of reselling. The one that springs to mind for me is Rally Roots. They are very hard workers who do a lot of uh, reselling even though they've got a big channel. And yes, they may spend a lot of time on YouTube and they're very good YouTubers uh, in, you know, editing and the, the presentation style and all the rest of it. But they, then they've not lost, it's funny, actually, they've not lost their roots. Yeah, see what I did there? Anyway, uh, they've not lost their roots within the reselling. They still do and put a lot of time into their reselling business. So, um, yeah, but you have other YouTubers, and I won't name names, but you do it because I don't really know that many names. Anyway, not many names spring to mind, but I'd have to look at the different ones I'm meaning. But um, you have other YouTubers kind of, all oh, right, well, we'll do the YouTube more. And, do it. and it's fine, but really, as I've said, you need to be honest with people. You need to say, look, right... Um, basically I've moved from reselling to YouTube and that's where I make all my money now and I'm doing reselling still and I'll continue to produce content on reselling but look, actually, I'm only doing reselling one day a week because my YouTube is paying for the rest of it or I'm getting sponsorship deals or I'm getting, uh, I don't know, I've got a website or I've got this or I've got whatever it may be, you know, or I've got merch, I've got other things that end up pay paying for me so I don't need to do much on reselling and I'm therefore working on my more like kind of internet marketing business or my um, YouTube brand or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, a lot of people don't do that and then it's like, and then people start projecting evil at them thinking that they're this horrible person when they're not a horrible person or anything, these people. It's just that because they've not necessarily been open with it, let's say, and I'm not thinking of anyone specific here, I'm just simply saying generally there's possibly people like this about, you know, not even just within, I mean, certainly I'm talking within the reselling niche, but people do this with other niches as well, other things, other um, jobs and stuff like that within YouTube, and I mean, it's very common among um, people, you know, who've gone into, let's say, internet marketing and stuff like that. It's very common in that kind of field. Um, but yeah, so they, they kind of, um, you, you know, they just need to be more open about it. And then, then people won't necessarily think they're bad people or anything. They'll simply be like, well, you know what, you've been open about it, it's all right. Um, for example, if I want it, which it may be very, very soon, actually, that I start changing up my content a little bit for uh, reasons that I've yet to talk about in a video. But it, obviously, if I do that, I'll say, look, guys, this is going. This I'm dropping this on my channel. Um, if you want to stick around, you can do. But this is how it's going to be in future. And, you know, and that's what you do. And, and if you do that, then it's cool, isn't it? You're all right. But it's those kind of people who actually put on a front, as people have said. Um, and essentially, they're, they're not reselling or anything like that. But they actually still do reselling content and we try and trick people by it. It's, like, it's weird. It's, uh, yeah, it's really weird. But anyway, I'll leave it there, guys, and I will see you in the next one. So thanks for joining me for this video, and I will see you very soon. Slow down.